On Monday, a total eclipse will travel coast to coast for the first time in 99 years. NASA scientists will use specially equipped aircraft to get an up close view. David Begno is at NASA's Ellington Field in Houston with this ambitious airborne experiment. David? Jeff, good morning from the south. The pilots flying these NASA aircrafts, and there will be two of them, will be flying at 50,000 feet above the clouds and above any kind of atmospheric turbulence. There will be two guys on board. you got the pilot in the front and the operator in the back. He's the man that's going to be controlling the joystick to get the photos. And to get that, they've taken the nose cone off this old bomber plane and outfitted it with a precise telescopic lens that's going to help NASA unlock some of the secrets of the sun. It's go time for NASA's stratospheric airborne science team. These pilots at Ellington Field next door to Johnson Space Center in Houston are going on an atmospheric research flight. Their ride is a 1960s era former bomber jet called the WB-57. During Monday's total solar eclipse, these same planes will serve a very different purpose. You're not wearing the moon suit, but you have to wear the eclipse glasses, right? Yeah, it's actually even more important to wear the eclipse glasses at high altitudes. There's less uh, air to uh, block the sun, and the sun's a lot stronger. Kerry Clem is one of four NASA flight crew members who will be chasing the eclipse over Missouri, Illinois, and Kentucky at 460 miles per hour. My job is to calibrate and initialize the camera payload that we'll be using to look at the eclipse. That includes focusing and zooming in to get the best shot. You don't get a plane ride. Unfortunately, I don't get a plane ride, but the... Amir Caspi will lead the team of scientists. These planes will be outfitted with special cameras in their nose cones. So the planes will be looking at the solar corona, the outer atmosphere of the sun. During a regular day, the sky is so bright you can't see the corona. But during a total solar eclipse, that dim corona suddenly becomes visible. Our results will lead to a better understanding of the corona, which will eventually lead to a better understanding of flares and coronal mass ejections. Which affects the public how? They can cause blackouts of radio frequency communications. Cell phones can have trouble working. It can cause power outages by knocking out power grids. The best way to understand what erupts off the sun's corona is to photograph it over long periods of time. But ground-based cameras will only have about two minutes of the total eclipse time. All right, here we go, dude. You ready? Yes, I am. Because two of these planes will be flying tandem right along the eclipse path, it will give these scientists an unprecedented look at our sun. Each plane will be able to observe totality for about four minutes. And when we stitch together the observations from both of the airplanes, we'll be getting 30 photographs a second for seven and a half minutes of totality. That's about 29,000 photographs between the two airplanes. Fascinating, right? So Monday on CBS, we will be showing you live images from this aircraft in real time as the eclipse is happening. Nora, do you know that at 50,000 feet where this pilot's gonna be, it's 20 to 30 times darker up there than it will be for the rest of us on the ground. You know what, David? I did not did know, you know that. that I did not, but now I do because <laughs> yes. David tells us things that we did not Bingo. previously. Now we all know. Now At some know. point you reach a level of dark, though, where you can't get any darker, right? That's yeah, probably point. true. <laughs> well, you can see the stars. We'll talk about this yeah. later. Yeah. All right.